friends, I am Anpit and I am here with today's analysis. Today is 4th of July and we are going to deal with three very important topics which are in news. The first is drug consumption increases in the entire world, says a United Nations report. Well, July 26th is observed as the World Drug Day, aiming to reduce the drug consumption all across the world, making this world a drug-free world. This report was released on and the findings are definitely disturbing next is exercise maitri exercise maitri is a military exercise which is being practiced between the armies of india and thailand a contingent of 76 members has gone to thailand this year last year this exercise was in uh, india in in uh, northeast now, the basic aim of this exercise is to develop or to establish interoperability and, you know, standard operating procedures in case of an anti-insurgency operation in jungles as well as in urban areas. Next is presidential elections in Iran. So, in the mid of May, we covered this topic where the president of Iran died due to a helicopter crash. Now, this death of the president called for this elections to happen the first round of elections have happened none of the candidates have secured the minimum 50 percent of the votes which are which is a basic condition so now a run-up polls will be conducted on 5th of july the conservationist as well as the reformists both are there conducting the elections then we move on to the mcqs of today and we'll be discussing the answers to the mcqs of yesterday now, drug consumption increasing, says a United Nations report. International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking or World Drug Day. This is celebrated on June 26th and this report was released on this particular day. Theme for this year, when it, this day was celebrated, this year's campaign recognizes that effective drug policies must be rooted in science, research, full respect for human rights, compassion and a deep understanding of the social, economic and health implications of drug use social implications it can make the society kind of lawless it can divert the youth towards these kind of illicit activities making them less productive making them less productive means they are not part of any economic setup economic growth will be hampered a parallel economy will be created where you no know, transactions for drug smuggling or drug trafficking and all do take place that all is illicit money crimes like money laundering and all will be on the rise so these things are there with respect to you know uh, this drug consumption the findings in the decade up to 2022 the number of people using illicit drugs increased to 292 million the unodc report says it noted that most users worldwide consume 228 million people consume cannabis, 60 million people worldwide consume opioids, 30 million people amphetamines, 23 million cocaine, 20 million ecstasy. All these are psychological drugs, means which have an impact on your psyche. They create hallucinations, they, you know, create such kind of situations which amplify your emotions. And the sad part is that you are away from the reality. And this is why it is. Further, UNODC found that there was an increase in an overdose deaths. If you do overdose, overconsumption of these drugs, there are chances that you die also. Particularly cocaine, a lot of overdose deaths with respect to or due to cocaine are found in India also. Following the emergence of netazines. Netazines are a group of synthetic opioids. Synthetic opioids means they are not naturally found. They are made in the, I would say, laboratories like meth and all. Potentially more dangerous than fentanyl in several high-income countries. So in several high-income countries, the consumption is rising. Then traffickers in the Golden Triangle region in Southeast Asia have found ways to integrate more with the other markets. So Golden Triangle is these four countries, Myanmar, Laos, Thailand and Vietnam a good drug producing region 
so it is getting integrated with the world more this is not a good news means the network of drug growers and the markets is getting more and more robust next is displaced poor and migrant communities these people this is rising whether due to climate change calamities and all are happening or due to political conflicts these kind of i would say communities are on the rise and when they go to a new place they don't find some work to do then they are easy praise for those people who are indulged in growing drugs and all so they take them they forced to engage in opium farming or illegal resource extraction for their survival they are forced to do this this can lead to civilians becoming drug users as well these people can start consuming drugs while growing them so these are the findings these illegal crimes contribute to environmental degradation also how environmental degradation deforestation toxic waste dumping and chemical contamination of those all synthetic drugs which are produced so definitely it impacts the environment and consumption is on the rise so the impact is also on the rise in 2022 cocaine production hit a record high with 2757 tons produced a 20% increase from 2021 and in a year 20% increase is concerning the increase in supply and demand of the product was accompanied by a surge of violence in the nations along the supply chain so violence was also witnessed this is an organized crime and organized crime also entails violence at times it is referred to as narco terrorism so terrorism where violence is there narco when drugs where drugs are involved so it is like this there was also a spike in health problems within some destination countries in western and central europe so obviously when you are consuming drugs you are definitely impacting your body so health problems can happen gastric issues can happen or heart issues can happen lungs can be impacted anything can be impacted the hope which unodc unodc is that body united nations organization for drug consumption so what does this say it highlights that the right to health is an internationally recognized human right that belongs to all human beings regardless of a person's drug use status or whether a person is imprisoned detained or incarcerated so right to health that person drug addict also has and it should be the responsibility of the government to tactfully handle drug abuse bring them away from drug consumption those people who are addicts take care of their health those people who have not indulged in drug consumption give them awareness that if you get indulged your health will be hampered impacted unodc's call for governments organizations and communities to collaborate on establishing evidence based plans that will fight against drug trafficking and organized crime so organized crime has been included in the bharatiya nyay sanhita for the very first time a definition is there a provision is there rest until now it was only in the maharashtra's i would say ambit maharashtra uh, control of organized crime act mco act it was the agency also hopes communities will assist in fostering resilience against drug use and promoting community led solutions so this is also happening but let's see how things go from here next is a factual news that is of exercise maitri an indian army contingent departed for thailand this exercise 13th edition of joint military exercise maitri is going to be conducted from 1st to 15th of july 2024 means it is ongoing right now at fort bachira prakan in tak province of thailand now this year's prelims there was a question from uh, you know this uh, these exercises and that is why they become important however it was comparatively an easier one previous edition last edition of the same exercise was conducted at umroi meghalaya in september 2019 now after 2019 this is happening now participants from india in an army contingent comprising 76 personnel is being represented mainly by a battalion of the ladakh scouts along with personnel from other services as well largely it is a an army exercise now aim of the exercise why do these exercises happen or what are the aims of these kind of exercises first is to foster military cooperation between the armies of india and thailand enhance combined capabilities in executing joint counter insurgency or terrorist operations in jungle and urban environment now 
urban environment like 2611 attacks happened urban environment and they are also you know recommended under chapter 7 of the un charter that countries should collaborate for these kind of exercises jungle areas urban areas and all. the exercise will focus on high degree of physical fitness joint planning and joint tactical drills will enable the two sides to share their best practices and which will help in developing interoperability means they understand how we operate we understand how they operate and in times of i would say emergency we there are not a deciding or wasting time in understanding that how each other operates that is how that is what establishing interoperability means born homie and camaraderie between the soldiers of both the countries now activities during the exercise creation of a joint operation center establishing an intelligence and surveillance center employment of drones and counter drone system this is very much important securing a landing site of the load drones and if airdrop has to happen then where it has to happen small team insertions and extractions special heavy bone operations means helicopter bone operations cordon and search operations room intervention drills and demolition of illegal structures so these kind of drills or these kind of things they will do they will be doing in this particular exercise which is going to extend for 15 days that is first of 15th uh, first to 15th july this is the 13th edition of this exercise just a revision in this nutshell presidential elections in iraq in mid of may we covered this topic where uh, the earlier president mr ibrahim raisi was you know unfortunately dead in an helicopter crash along with him the foreign minister of iran also died now there has to be an election for the president of iran so people are voting there are candidates which have been short shortlisted by the supreme authority over there in iran just to understand in a nutshell iran is basically a shia country a shiite a theocratic shia republic it is the head of the state having the real powers is the supreme leader of iran below supreme leader of iran is the president of iran the supreme leader of iran is not chosen by the people it is chosen by the 12 shias 12 imams in in shia islam you know there are certain factions like followers of 12 imams those who are the 12 senior most i would say religious priests of that country they will be choosing the supreme leader until now you know Iran has had only two supreme leaders. I mean, the, this is the second supreme leader which is into, uh, I would say, position that right now. This Iran became a Shia theocratic republic in 1979 only. Before 1979, Iran was a monarchy. There was a monarch. That monarch was known to be hardcore pro-West. There was protest. There was overthrow. There was a coup. And this kind of system was established. The supreme leaders are there there are two factions political factions in iran major political factions one is the conservative which are hardline islamic people they are hardcore anti-west and on the other hand there are the reformists who are having a soft corner towards the west and they are more promoting women's rights freedom of speech and expression fundamental rights for the people these kind of thought processes they are having can a supreme leader only be from the conservative faction? No, supreme leader can also be from a liberal fraction. The president can also be from any of these factions. And in the present election, 69-year-old cardiac surgeon Masood Peseshkian, a reformist, and 58-year-old hardliner Saeed Jalili, they both are in the race. There are other candidates also, but the top two candidates are these. And unfortunately, neither of the top two candidates have won more than 50% of the votes, which is a mandate if you want to become the president. They will face off in a runoff elections on July 5. So July 5, there will be a runoff elections and then we will see what happens in that. How is the president elected? See, many people apply to become candidates, but the establishment oversees the selection process. Establishment means the body of that 12 imams and only vetted candidates can contest they shortlist and they recommend the names these, these these can contest 
in those 12 imams also there can be people having the mindset of conservatives mindset of this reformists this can also happen so the reformists in those 12 imams that grouping the supreme i would say uh, grouping in iran which is responsible for choosing a supreme leader and responsible for choosing the presidential candidates and the chosen presidential candidates the people vote for them most candidates are from the establishment and only a few reformists can enter the frame people vote directly for the candidates securing more than 50 percent votes is necessary presidential elections this one has witnessed 40 percent voter turnout which is the lowest the previous lowest was 49 percent happened in 2022 when ibrahim raisi was elected as the president now even much lower 40 percent voter turnout with no candidates surpassing the 50 percent mark in the first round so second round will happen on 5th of july so let's see who wins it politics in iran how it is now since the islamic revolution of 1979 when the monarchy was overthrown on one side are the conservatives who want to strictly adhere to the tenets of 12 shiaism iran's state religion they are hardcore anti-west and they enjoy massive support especially among the poorer sections of the society they you know force radical assertion against western imperialism on the other hand are the reformists while remaining loyal to the revolution they remain loyal to the revolution they said that it is good that the monarchy has ended but they are more flexible both in domestic and international matters for instance support greater rights for women strengthening civil society and human rights they also want free elections and more conciliatory relations with the West. So they want this, the reformists. And these two are the candidates which are there in the race right now. So Masood Pezeshkian, a reformist. Saeed Jalili, a hardliner, means a conservative. The tussle between conservatives and reformists have been the central theme of Iranian politics. Now, Iran's president versus the supreme leader. The president operates within the overall authority of the supreme leader, means supreme leader is on top of the president. But he is nonetheless a powerful figure in the Iranian political structure, the president also. President plays a crucial role in mediating between the legislature and the executive, appoints ministers and vice presidents. President also makes key foreign policy decisions, like key foreign policy decisions made by the presidents of Iran. President Hassan Rouhani acted with significant authority during the JCPOA negotiations. JCPOA is Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. Iran was sanctioned by USA and the West because of its nuclear program. It was a negotiation between Iran and the permanent five countries how to work with the sanctions or remove the sanctions. Among Raisi's major achievement, the previous president who unfortunately died, was Iran-Saudi deal. Iran-Saudi deal happened in 2016. They both, sorry, 2023, they both broke off their diplomatic relations in 2016 when a Shia cleric was, you know, executed in Iran. Sorry, in, in Saudi Arabia. Then China brokered this deal. So, Raisi was part of it. It was he who raised the pitch for an axis of resistance. Axis of resistance is basically all the Shia organizations in West Asia whether it be Hamas, or sorry, whether it be Houthis from Yemen, Hezbollah from Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, there are multiple groups. So all these groups, which are in support of Hamas, are called as axis of resistance. Can the president's authority be superseded? President's authority can definitely be superseded in case of a conflict between the president and the uh, supreme leader. Take care. In the event of clash between him and the supreme leader, it is important to note whether, however, that the supreme leader does not have to be a conservative. Supreme leader can also be a reformist. Okay. Now, in fact, it was a liberal cleric and human rights activist named Hussein Ali Montazeri who was designated as the successor of Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini. Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini was the first supreme leader in 1979. He died in 1989. And since then, the current supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khomeini, has become the supreme leader and he is still there at the helm of affairs. He is the supreme leader, second supreme leader of Iran.
he is a conservator but there was a struggle between montazeri and khomeini but khomeini became the supreme leader the topics are over we now enter the mcqs when is the world drug day observed very simple question i'm not going into the options also second consider the statements and mark the correct one according to the report of unodc on drug consumption first is drug consumption has increased in the last decade worldwide golden triangle is getting less integrated with the world as there are other drug growing regions in the latin america gaining prominence which among these statements is r2 you have to find third consider the following statements with respect to exercise maitri and mark how many of them are not correct it is a maritime exercise between india and thailand it aims at building interoperability it aims at developing a counter insurgency operational skills for jungle and urban areas only one statement is incorrect only two statements are incorrect all the statements are incorrect none of the statements are incorrect the keyword here is how many and another keyword is incorrect or not correct carefully answer this consider the following statements and mark the correct one iran's president operates within the overall authority of the supreme leader the supreme leader of iran is always from the conservative faction the president of iran is democratically chosen only one and two only one and three only one all of the above are correct so choose carefully who is the current supreme leader of iran ayatollah ali khamenei ayatollah rohla khamenei ibrahim raisi none of the above so simple questions now the mcqs of yesterday consider the statements and mark the correct one nepal adopted its latest constitution in 2015 this statement is correct there has not been a single party majority government in nepal since 2022 this statement is also correct since 2015 17 there is no single party majority government in nepal so both the statements are correct which of the following statements is our truth india and nepal broke off diplomatic ties during the 2015 episode when nepal was passing its constitution this statement is not true there were tensions but diplomatic ties were not broken off so this has to be seen very clearly in this way madhesia community was at the center of the conflict between india and nepal in 2015 yes madhesia community it was india is nepal's largest trading partner presently yes this statement is also correct so only 2 and 3 is the correct answer for this which of the following were changes happened on the recommendations of swaran singh committee shifting of education from union list to concurrent list did not happen this statement is wrong from the state list to the concurrent list it was transferred so don't get swayed away introduction of fundamental duties in the constitution this statement is correct so b is the correct answer for this which of the following acts created the federal structure for india before independence so by this very factual government of india act 1935 it was explicitly given also this is the in which of the countries education is governed by two national departments for school and higher education and the provinces have two departments to implement the policies and laws made by the center means everything with respect to education is with the center and there was only one country in our examples and that was south africa this is correct in usa the states have that center only has to deal with financing and all germany the states have that canada the states have that so it is like this the answer is south africa now with this we come to an end of today's session i hope you guys are attempting the mcqs you are you guys are learning the approach to attempt the mcqs small small things small small mistakes i hope you are committing because if you are committing you are learning and then after committing you are learning those mistakes you are not repeating those mistakes this is the main purpose of you know putting in these mcqs over here now with this we come to an end of today's session i will be seeing you tomorrow now with more such informative news pieces till then you guys very well know what to do not repeating it today namaste jai